Welcome to the ministry of Apostle Aaron J. Mobley Jr. We pray that this message is a blessing to you as you strive to become the image of Christ Jesus while continuing to impact lives that will change the world. Please stay tuned because at the end of this message, you will hear information on how you too can partner with the grace on the life of Apostle Mobley to advance the mission and the assignment of Jesus Christ. This message is already in progress. Any situation higher than any circumstance. Thank you, Lord God, that we've arisen because of you. We're here because of you. Father, we stand and we live because of you. We thank you, Father, that it is in you that we live. Hallelujah. It is in you that we move. It is in you that we have our being. Thank you, Father, for this moment in your presence. Thank you for this moment, Father, in your spirit. Thank you that you're causing your word to be made alive in us even the more. Even the more your word is made alive in our heart. Your word is made alive in our soul. Your word is made alive in our spirit. And we bless you today. That as the deer pants after the water brooks, mighty God, so does our souls thirst after you. You, Lord God, we give you praise da, 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 Bahaya, for the hunger that you're stirring within us. Yes, Lord, there's a hunger for more of you. There's a hunger to be obedient to you. There's a hunger to yield to you. There's a hunger to submit to you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we will not be as those that rebel against your will, those that rebel against your call, those that rebel against the assignment Lord but we bow ourselves Lord and we humble ourselves under your mighty hand that in due time you would exalt us in due time you would teach us in due time you would lead and guide us we give you glory today we thank you Lord God that we enter into a greater season of surrender a greater season of surrender to you, Lord God. The whims and the moves of your spirit, Lord. We surrender even the more this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that in these stony places of our heart, Father, you're causing those places to be places of flesh now. Places that you're able to minister and cause us to move. We thank you, Lord God, that we throw down pride. We thank that we throw down high mindedness, Lord, for we have not been this way before. We've not been this way before. We've not been this way before. So, Father, we thank you today, Lord God, that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We thank you, Father, that we make room to be guided by you. We make room to be directed by you. We thank you, Lord God, that we don't lean to our own understanding, but in all of our ways we acknowledge you, Lord God, for you know the way. And you know the path and you know the direction. That you are carrying us by your spirit. Father, we pray this morning in the name of Jesus. That we'll continue to be yielded to your spirit. For your word declares that those that are led by the spirit. They are the sons of God. And we want to be your sons and daughters. We want to be your children that listen to your voice and move as you speak. Thank you, Lord God, that we walk in the Spirit. That we walk in the Spirit. That we walk in the Spirit. Come on, let's just pray that out. Worship that out, Father. Help us to walk in the Spirit. Father, help us to trust what we're seeing, trust what we're hearing, trust what we're knowing, trust what we're sensing by your Spirit, Lord God. Come on, let's continue to pray that. More trust in your Spirit. More trust in your Spirit, Lord. More trust in your Spirit. 
Father, for you're showing us things. You're revealing things to us. Thank you, Lord God. 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 Hallelujah. Hayaba Shelebedio Rabahatia. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want you to take a moment to honor God for where God's taking you. Honor God for where He's taking you, what He's showing you, what He's revealing to you. Honor Him for that. Talalabashata. The Bible said the secret things belong to God, but once God starts revealing it to you, it belongs to you and to your children forever. Haya! Ilalabashandaladabahodiata. What God is showing you isn't just for your lifetime, it's for the lifetime of those that come after you. God is trying to give you revelation that goes beyond the years. And as you worship God there with your eyes closed, I, you, I want you to receive another revelation of the future by the Spirit of God. Allow the Spirit of God to stimulate another level of sight beyond what you've seen. Hallelujah. Beyond what you've seen already. He said, Eyes have not seen, neither ears heard, neither is entered in the heart of men the things that God has prepared for them that love. Mashaya! But it has been revealed to us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches the deep things. There are more gifts in you than you know. There are more talents in you than you know. And may the hand of God today begin to activate new gifts. Randele be ita da da ba ba ndo da be hedia. New gifts, new talents for this next coming season. Tala da ba 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 ba. Many of you will begin to be stirred with new gifts, and you'll try to figure out where did this gift come from, where did that sensitivity come from. Hala la ba sha. Whenever God moves you into a new season. He begins to introduce new gifts that match that place. Before David confronted Goliath, he had little use for the sling weapon. He used it on the bears and on the lions, but he had little use for it with a human being. But when he stepped into his season, Halalabasha, the thing he was carrying all along, found new power. And I speak to your spirit this morning in the name of Jesus, that every dormant gift that you've been carrying your entire life, that you've not used, that you've just been carrying your spirit. I call that gift forward and to the surface in the name of Jesus that you might use it in this new season. You have everything you need to move. Put your hand on your belly. And through the power of God in your own hands. Begin to call those gifts out of there. Tell those gifts to wake up by the power of God. 
Hande de de be be ki brahaba yele be shanda. I'm not even thinking about the gifts I already know I have. Hana mashanda. I'm talking about the gifts I don't even know are in there. The working of miracles. Yele le be shanda. The gifts of healings. The gifts of faith. Hando bo kore be 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 ita da da babanda. Mandele le bohori anda. The gift of prophecy. Mandele le bohori orasa. Father, whatever gifts have been laying dormant and sleeping in us this morning, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would stir up the gift in us. Don't let us neglect the gift. Don't let us neglect the gift. Don't let us neglect the gift. I want you to begin to pray for a sharp edge in the spirit. A sharp edge in the spirit. Begin to pray that God would begin to sharpen the edges of every gift. The edges of every anointing. The edges of every talent. Sharp, sharp, sharp. God has not called you to be dull. God has not called you to be average or mediocre. Come on, pray that out. Believe God for that this morning. Father, you've not called me to be dull in any area of my life. You've come, Ashaya. You've called me to be a sharp weapon. You've called me to be a sharp leader. You've called me to be a sharp intercessor. You've called me to be a sharp prophet. You've called me to be a sharp pastor. You've called me to be a sharp evangelist. Yes, God. I yield to another level of sharpening in the spirit mandele bekibra babande ilana bashanda i don't just i just don't want to see average things i just don't want to hear average things i just don't want to know average things mighty god open up my spirit ilana bashanda rabaha to the wells of your spirit towards me cause waters to come out of my belly ilana bashanda rabakam diniatia ila bakari andoa for the earth is calling for me come on pray people the earth is calling for me my family is calling for me. Pandele bebe kibra bakandi atela bahaya. I cannot stay still. Andele lebo rosina babande le lebo. I cannot forget that there's a mandate on the calling you have for me. There's a demand for the anointing. There's a demand for the anointing. Come on, feel this. There's a demand for the anointing. I've counted up the cause and I say yes Lord I will not rebel against the call I will not rebel against the mandate I yield to you Lord God I yield to your Lord God. Come on, come on, come on, feel this, receive this. Come on, in this place, we must be totally submitted. In this place, we must be totally yielded. Come on, come on, get out of your mind and tap into your spirit. Stop letting your mind block this download. Because God is downloading. God is downloading another measure of revelation for the assignment and the call. Get out of your mind. And tap in your spirit now. Because you think you know all that God has in you. You don't know. There's more. There's more. There's more word in there. There's more. There's more gifts in there. There's more. There's more anointing in there. Palalabo Rababa Shariatia. Borebeki the end of the Dio Rababa Baba de the Diosia. So Father, we thank you this morning that there's a boldness. There's a boldness, there's a boldness that you are depositing and bringing out of us. 
there's a holy boldness there's a confidence there's a holy bold Monday and there's a confidence father we shall not fear for what can man do to us we shall not fear for what can man do unto us Come on, I want you to receive a fresh download in your spirit. And as your eyes are closed, focus on God. I want you to begin to hear some new things. I want you to see some new things. I want you to know some new things. He said, Behold, I do a new thing. Shall you not know it? God wants your spirit to begin to know some things right now. And even in this place, I hear the Spirit of God speaking to your heart and declaring over your life. As the Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me I believe this morning by the mind of God that God is pouring fresh oil and wine water and wind into your spirit the wind to move forward the wind to excel the wind to receive and to move on the word of God. Fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind. I just wanna encourage you this morning by the mind of God, as we've been talking about accelerating the call of God for your life, for your ministry, for your purpose, for your family. I want you to readily understand what I'm about to say. This moment in time is for you. This moment in time is for you. There's a rising up that God wants you to take on. And whenever you rise up, it is a conscious decision to get up. It's a conscious decision to rise to the occasion where you are not waiting on anyone, you're not waiting on anything, you're not waiting on resources or, or the support to come from others, you are rising up within yourself, knowing that God has already given you all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. And precious people, when you rise in the knowledge of Jesus, there comes a level of reinforcement to strengthen the thing that he's called you to. You have enough in you to take on this next level of assignment, to take on this next level of calling, to take on this next level of purpose. Somebody say, I have enough in me. And precious people, you just don't have enough in you. You have more than enough. Hallelujah. The El Shaddai power of God is living in you the El Shaddai Mando is thriving in you feel this this morning you have more than enough he said behold I do a new thing shall you not know it behold I do a new thing shall you not know it and the thing about the new thing is precious people the thing about the new thing is that you're going to have to make a conscious decision to leave the old. The thing about the new thing is that you're going to have to make a conscious decision to leave the old. What does that mean? 
what that literally means is even sometimes old seasons that were good you have to let that go because sometimes seasons could be so good that you could keep that as the monument of your movement and what the spirit of god is saying to us today is i need to show you some new things i need to get your mind on some new things i need to get your eyesight on some new things glory to god somebody said new things 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 in your home new things in your ministry new things in your purpose new things in your assignment new things glory to jesus glory to jesus glory to jesus he, he said behold i do a new thing shall you not know it are you going to look at this new thing and act like you don't see it are you going to hear this new thing and act like you're not hearing it are you going to let the past any event whether good or bad keep your head turning around and and your feet stuck at that present place receive this today god's doing a new thing and sometimes when, when we hear god is doing a new thing our mind goes back to promises our mind goes back to those things but god is saying now listen in this new place is the promise in this new place is the fruit when god sent his people out of egypt he says i want you to go and head towards canaan and in canaan the bible says he says it was a land flowing with milk and honey do you remember that a land flowing with milk and honey so in order for them to receive the milk and honey they had to get to canaan they had to get to the land and sometimes we're so focused on the past and the present that we are refusing to go to the place where the promise is living and god is saying i've got a call for you i've got an assignment for you i've going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. But you've got to walk towards me. You have to submit to my guidance. You've got to submit to my direction. You're going to have to trust me more than yourself. And I need you to write that down. I must trust God more than I trust myself. Because see, beloved of God, we are trusting in ourselves, our mind. Well, Apostle, I hear what you're saying, but... Well, Apostle, I hear what you're showing, but... Apostle, I, I understand what the scripture says, but... We're trusting in ourselves more than we are trusting in God. So, Father, right now, we thank you today... That we remove ourselves from your seat in our lives. We will trust you above our mind. We will trust you above our thinking. We will trust you above our logic. We will trust you above our planner. Because sometimes your planner can become your God. Your schedule can become your God. Your budget can become your God. Your thinking can become your God. Your red pen can become your God. You've got your plan or you've got your red pen, which represents the things that are most priority. And nothing goes against that red pen. And I'm coming this morning to tell you, God's coming after that red pen. God's coming after those things that you've placed as priority and it's keeping you stuck in your mind. God is saying, I want you to travel in the spirit with me. You just have to travel with me. The Bible said that those that are born of the wind, you don't know where they come or where they go. And that's what God is trying to bring back in us. 
He's trying to put his wind back in us. And we're asking God, Father, Father, breathe on me and breathe in me. And God is saying, well, if I put my wind in you, there are going to be some days you're just going to have to be led by me and trust me. Because God sends wind in and out of places as he desires. Glory to God. Are you willing to be the wind of God in the earth? Are you willing to be the wind of God in your family? Not just to breathe life, but to move as you are led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your time has come. Behold, I do a new thing. I do a new thing. I want you to think about your greatest moment, your greatest place. And then I want you to forget about it. <laughs> Think about your greatest moment. Your most happiest place. Your greatest level of success. And now I want you to forget about it and act as though it never occurred. You know why that's important? Because long as you have a greatest point, God will never be able to give you greater. Because you'll be stuck at that point. And you'll constantly try to go back to that point. You'll constantly try to recreate something that God is trying to move you beyond. You'll try to get the people that were connected to that point. You'll try to get the locations that were connected to that point. You'll try to try to do what you need to do to feel like you felt you'll, you'll wear the clothes you wore at that greatest point and God is saying I need you to appreciate that point but forget about it and set your eyes forward because I have something greater than that greater 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 than that and what God's doing in this season. I'm almost done. I just wanted to encourage you this morning. But God's doing in this season. God is feeding you. God is feeding you. God is feeding you. Uh, last week the Lord showed me. And I posted about it. He showed me tables of food. Tables of food in the spirit. And it wasn't just one table of food. It was multiple tables of food. And it was kind of like uh, each additional table was on the top of the other, lifted up. Kind of like a ladder. Tables like a ladder. Now the first table of food, you could pull up a chair and, and immediately access that food. But the higher you went up, you had to reach for the next table. And then once you reach for that next table, then the table above that, you had to stand on the seat of the first table to get to that next thing. Meaning every level of food, there was more effort and energy needed to access it. And this is why we work on the flesh. And we crucify the flesh. And we pray about the flesh. Because you're going to need effort and energy in this season. To access these next season levels of food. Because the first level of food, precious people, that's not feeding your future. That's feeding your past. The first level of food will never be able to feed your future. That's why you're only maintaining. It's those higher levels of food that begin to challenge your flesh, challenge your mind, challenge your thinking. Because guess what? You're going to hit a point of curiosity in the spirit. When you're looking up and saying, I wonder what's on that other table up there. I know what's on this first table. I've ate that. But I wonder what's on that top table. 
that the enemy is trying to stop me from eating, trying to stop me from receiving, trying to stop me from downloading. What's on the top table? And you've got to begin to pray and talk to God. Father, I'm tired of eating this first level of table food. The second level of table food. What is the new thing on the top level? What's the new thing on the top level? That the enemy has been trying to move away from my sight. There are the levels to this. And I feel really strongly that God is calling our lives to the next level. And it's going to take us doing like God told Joshua. Moses, my servant, is dead. Don't you know God loved Moses? But God wasn't going to keep Moses around and his plan for Israel slow down. God knows how to end a good thing to evolve something greater. Get that in your notes. God knows how to end a good thing. See, it's not always the bad thing that come to an end. God will end a good thing to introduce something greater. God let Moses fade away and he did it so strategically that the people didn't even know Moses was gone. They thought Moses was up there in the mountain praying. They didn't even know Moses was gone. That's how seamless God's transition is in your life. He'll cause a good thing to end. While he introduces something greater, he comes to Joshua and he says, Moses, my servant is dead. Now arise. Get over this Jordan. You and all the people I have attached to your life. And that's what God is telling us in this season. All right. I'm causing one thing to come to an end. But I'm, a, I'm introducing something that's going to be far greater than it. And if we stay in a good place and just a, enjoy a good thing. We will literally stop the opening of something much greater. Precious people, this has been good. This has been good. You've done a great job. I'm well pleased in what I've seen. But precious people, God is ending this stage. And he's opening up a door. And he's pointing toward a light. And whenever you look into a bright light. You know something's there. But sometimes the clarity of what's behind it. Is not seen. If you ever tell me. That you have an assignment by God. And you see everything clear. You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. The Bible said God hides himself in light. And we move towards the light. And the closer we get towards the light, the more and more we see him. The Bible said it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But when we see him, we're going to be like him. These next months, it doth not yet appear what it shall be in its fullness. But God has shown us enough to get up and to start moving towards it by faith. Get that down in your notes. God has shown me just enough for me to get up and start moving by faith. God has shown me just enough for me to get up and for me to start moving by faith. There's an old song that used to sing it like this. What more can he do? He's done open up the window. He's already opened up the way. What more can he do? And that's what God is asking you this, this morning. Have I not shown you enough for you to rise 
and move towards me not knowing the fullness of what I have behind the light you're just going to have to trust me you're just going to have to be led by me he said behold I do a new thing shall you not know it shall you not know it and in the season that God is bringing you to God is giving you as I said earlier he's giving you new gifts that meet that meet new season demands new gifts that meet new season demands and let me show you this sometimes God will let you use a weapon in a past season and you'll be very successful in using that weapon in using that particular gift it's worked for you but then as God moves you into a new season and a new territory he'll give you another weapon but here's the caution when God begins to bring new gifts and new talents and new anointings and new graces in your life, refuse to reach back to get the old weapon that was attached to an old season. Because just because something worked last year does not mean it's going to work today. Did God use that last year? Yes. Did it work for you last year? Yes. But that doesn't mean that it matches the place God's taking you. When God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, he used a staff, a rod, in the hand of Moses to open up the Red Sea. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? But when Joshua took the people to the walls of Jericho, if Joshua had tried to use Moses' staff, it would not have worked. Glory to God. It would not have worked. So Joshua had to be in a place with God to get a new strategy for a new place. This time God says, uh-uh, you ain't going to use the staff for this. I want you to march around these walls silently for six days. And on the seventh day, I want you to shout. It was a new strategy for a new season. And that's why sometimes we're not moving forward. Because we're using the same old weapons. We have put our confidence in weapons that no longer have power in the season. And it takes you laying on your face before God. Crying out to God. God, show me. The strategy for this season open up my prophetic eyes. Cause me to be like the sons of Issachar. To know what I ought to do. To have a discerning of the time. If you're not discerning the times, you'll be operating as you used to be in an old season and not seeing the results. And then you'll start to get sad saying God why am I not seeing results and God is going to say to you because you're using last season's weapons last season's plans I've got something else Samson used the jawbone of an ass to destroy the Philistines in, in one battle but if he had tried to use that again it would not have worked it would not have worked because God always gives us new strategies for new seasons. But we're going to have to lay on our face to get it. We're going to have to fast and call out to God to get it. He said, behold, I want to do a new thing. But stop relying on old strategies. That's old. Don't tell me anything about a strategy God gave you in 1999 or 2000. Or 2020. Come on. Every day the Bible said the mercies of God are new. Every day God gives you plans. God gives you insights. 
So we have to start to yield and pull on God. Father, what's the strategy for this next place in my life? And then once God gives you that strategy, you work that strategy until he gives you another. And when God gives you another strategy, be willing to put down the old. Be willing to put down the old. You have to become flexible with God because God is evolving you. Think about the, the caterpillar. Once the caterpillar goes to that level of transformation and grows and evolves into that butterfly, it would be a terrible thing if that caterpillar decides not to fly because it was so used to walk crawling. It has everything it needs to fly, but its mind is so locked down on the past that it says, I'm going to forget I have these wings. I'm going to crawl. He said, behold, I'm trying to do a new thing, but you keep grabbing that old plan. Am I not able to give you something fresh? Am I not able to give you something new? And then someone says, well, apostle, you just don't know how, how much work I put in that old plan, how much money I put in that old plan, how much effort I put in that old plan. Beloved of God, is your future worth it? Is your future worth it? God gave Abram a plan to take Isaac to the Mount of Moriah to sacrifice him. But after Abram went through all that trouble and energy, taking the wood up there, he carried wood up on the mountain. Dragging it up there and building an altar up there and taking Isaac up there and all that energy and time and effort and strength to finally get there and then for God to change his mind and said, don't do it. Now I know you love me. Now I know you trust me. There's a ram in the thicket of the thorn. And some of you have been telling God, I put so much energy in this thing. I cannot let this thing go. And I'm telling you by the mind of God today that you will continue to struggle if you don't let go of the things that God is putting an expiration on. You won't bear fruit if you don't allow God to change your plan. And you've got to yield to the Spirit of God and say, God, my trust in you is worth forgetting about all the effort and the energy I put into it. Am I talking to you? Listen, precious people. Do you know why Cain killed Abel? Cain killed Abel because Cain was offering God something from the earth that God had already cursed. Abel was offering God living sacrifices. And when Abel was blessed by God, Cain was looking at Abel being blessed by God. Because see, Abram, Abel was working the plan of God. Something God wanted in that season. Cain kept giving God something God had put an expiration on. Cain kept bringing it to God. Father, bless this. God said, I don't want that. I don't want that. I'm doing something new. That's just how some of us are. Every day. Father, bless this. Increase this. And God is saying, I don't want that. I'm trying to give you something new. And then the next week, we act as though God didn't tell us he's trying to do a new thing. We keep offering him the old stuff and, and trying to figure out why it's not being blessed. Why isn't the blessing lasting? And God is saying, come to me. Lay before me. Spend quality time in my presence. I want to show you something new. The Bible said in Jeremiah 33 and 3, call unto me. And I'll answer you. And I'll show you great and mighty things. Even the things you don't even know of. Call to me. Stop offering me that. When I'm trying to show you something. I'm trying to give you another plan. 
I'm trying to give you another strategy that matches the season I'm carrying you to. So instead of Cain using Abel as an example, he gets mad at Abel, envious, offended at Abel. His heart begins get, begins to get hardened, and God is telling God begins to talk to Cain, and tells Cain, "You're mad at Abel because I'm receiving his gifts, but if you offer me what is pleasing to me, I'll receive yours too." But Cain can't receive that, so one day he decides to kill his brother Abel. Kill Abel physically can be like killing someone with your words rejecting teaching pushing back revelation acting as though you haven't heard the voice of God when you know you have humble yourself submit to it because you know right now you need some things to move in your life don't you you need some things to speed up. You need some things to progress. You need some things to develop. You need some things to go forward. And God is saying this new strategy is found in my presence. There's a higher level of spirit life that God's bringing on you. But you're going to have to be willing to bury it. You're going to have to be willing to bury old plans, old strategies, things that are not working. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Before we get rid of things that aren't working, we'll spend 15, 20 years trying to make it work wasting time and one of the things you have to do in your life while you're laying in the presence of God ask God will this thing work Lord have mercy are y'all hearing me ask God will this thing work one of the things I love about Ezekiel in Ezekiel 37 was the was that Ezekiel was willing to ask God only you know if these bones can live only you know so if God is the only one that knows you need to spend some time asking him will it work and don't go into prayer with your own answer because that's what we do sometimes we go into prayer with our own answer our own answer our own desire don't go into prayer with your own desire go into prayer with a mindset if God says yes that's great if God says no he, he's going to give me another plan it is pride that keeps you using something that isn't working that's pride that's pride. You know it doesn't work. But you still want to use it. I don't care how much effort and energy you put into something. Precious people, when God has put an expiration on something, there's no life that's going to come out of that. You can make it seem as though it's alive. But no fruit is going to come out of it when God's put an expiration on it. And somebody says, well, Apostle, God did tell me that in, in, you know, 2005 and whatever. Yes, I'm not saying God didn't tell you it. But what I'm saying is there are some instructions that are season oriented. And there's some dispensations that God let your life get to where God will say, yes, thank you for obeying me. Now, this is the new plan. I want you to do this. Don't let your pride keep you holding on to something that God's expiring in your life. 
I don't care if it's things. I don't care if it's people. People could have been great to you. But if God is moving your life in another direction, go with God. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Now you get up. Get over this Jordan. You and all the people that's attached to your life. As I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. The same way God was with you in past seasons, God is going to be with you in this new season. But you're going to have to begin to pull even more on new strategy or new revelation. Now you could you could leave this and act as though I haven't said the things I've said, but the spirit knows I have. And you can go back and be like Cain, fighting with the earth, offering it to God, trying to trick God into not knowing what his plan is is not going to work ask God Father what are the things that are working in this season what, what, what what's the instruction that's working in this season because I want to be in your will I want to navigate this season precisely because precious people you have to navigate seasons and one of the things I want to say to you is not all seasons are the same for every place in in this uh, hemisphere we have winter spring summer fall in this hemisphere but on other parts of the earth, they don't have those seasons. There are places on the earth that have a wet season and a dry season. That's all. See, you're looking at the seasons of another person's life, trying to make it work for yours when they might not be in the same place you're in. So it takes spiritual understanding glory to God to understand and to know what season you're in do you know and if you don't know precious people there's a way you can and that's by the spirit of God I said there's a way you can it's going to cost you some things it's going to cost you some things to follow after the Lord. It's going to cost you some things. To be directed by God. It's going to cost you some things. But precious people. What you're going to receive in this season. Will be more. Than what it cost. Get that down in your notes. What I'm getting in this season. Will be more. More than would it cost more more we started today's call by quoting Isaiah 43 behold I will do a new thing shall you not know it God's doing a new thing in your life and God wants you to walk towards it don't be afraid walk towards it be confident walk towards it be bold put down old weapons that don't have power in this season old plans it's going to hurt your heart sometimes to look at all you've invested in something and God is saying leave that I need to give you a new plan that will prosper you. A new plan that will make you fruitful. A new plan that will increase you. Aren't you tired working old plans? 
that are not giving you the fruit that you know God has for your life. He says in Jeremiah 33 and 3, Call ye upon me, and I'm going to show you great and mighty things, things that you don't already know. Even this morning, I'm thinking about those things I don't already know. I don't even know the depth of the plan of God but I can know them if I stay in his presence father I've given your people your word this morning as I've been led and I pray in the name of Jesus that another level of surrenderance will come upon us God that we would be willing to leave all and to follow you. Energy, effort, time that we've placed in old seasons. Father, if you're bidding us to leave those things behind to embrace something new, we'll do that. Help us strengthen our will, our mind and our spirit that we might follow after you even as your people were led out of Israel by pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day they had to keep their eyes on you to follow you and not a road map written by the hands of a man help us to be even so spirit led and spirit guided in Jesus' mighty name. Prayerfully, today's message has been a blessing to you. The ministry of Apostle Aaron J. Mobley Jr. is advanced through the faithful support of listeners just like you. Would you like to receive more information, resources, and tools to advance your personal walk with the Lord? Or would you like to become a grace partner by sowing your seed today? If so, please visit www.aaronjmobley.com for many free resources that we pray will be a blessing to you. Again, that website address is www.aaronjmobley.com on behalf of Apostle Aaron J. Mobley Jr. Thank you for listening and your faithful support. We are impacting lives to change the world.